Hello and welcome to the PVA Nightly Rundown, episode 48 for September 16th, 2019. Hope everybody is having a wonderful Monday. I am glad to be back at it on the regular schedule again. Here to bring you all of the video game news that you may have missed throughout the day so that you don't look like a fucking idiot at the water cooler. Guys, here at the top, I just want to apologize, all right? I've been fairly inconsistent in showing up for the show and putting this together and doing it. Um, and I was chatting with Larry about this, actually, um, the other day. And I was like, I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm just exhausted all the time. I work like a shitload. <laughs> And uh, then I, I don't sleep a whole lot. Uh, I have to be at work at 7.30 every single morning. So I'm up at like 6.30. Um, I go to bed at like 1 when I'm doing the show. So I was like, this is just, I, I got to figure something out, right? Got to figure something out. So uh took a little bit of time over the weekend to think through what I want to change because I love doing this show. I started doing this show because uh, I miss doing the Player 3 podcast, which is our old school podcast from back in the day, uh, where we run through all of the news for the week in that podcast. Uh, I, I love, uh, I missed being like engaged in what was going on in the day to day uh, gaming news world. And so, and, and I also just uh, enjoy doing the show, talking to people who uh, come by in the chat. Uh, pushing this over on YouTube, talking with people who leave their comments over there as well. Um, I enjoy putting this show together. Um, it's just a lot of work. You know, uh, I put the show notes together throughout the day, keeping up with my RSS feed. Um, I do my editing. Uh, I, you know, make the thumbnails, do all that sort of stuff, write the short little descriptions. Like it's, it's, it's a dance, right? It's a, it's a choreographed movement to get everything, uh, in place and uploaded and delivered to you guys. But I do it because I love it. And so I took some time this weekend to think like, how can I continue to do this can, with the same regularity, with the same, uh, quality, and better quality, because honestly, if I'm being if I'm being totally honest, the shows from last week were no bueno, and I'm willing to admit that. Uh, hold on, Larry just text me. Okay, he just said okay, um, because he just asked me something and uh, uh, related to what I'm going to tell you guys. So we're still going to do the show every single weeknight, except for Wednesdays, over here on twitchtv slash radio, 9 p.m. Eastern time, right? Um, however, on Mondays. Like tonight, I'm going to end the show right after the nightly rundown. So we normally play games for a little bit afterwards. Um, not going to do that on Mondays anymore. The reason for that is I've got to be up really fucking early the next day, like five o'clock the next day, because I got to drive an hour and 15 minutes to the office I work at. So um, I'm going to end the stream right after the nightly rundown on Mondays. That way I can do my editing and stuff uh, while I'm sitting up get it ready to go the next morning over on YouTube and then, uh, you know, hit, hit the, hit the hay at, uh, a decent hour. Uh, and then on Tuesdays, regular, regular time, you know, going to do the show, play games afterwards, uh, Wednesday, still doing PVA radio at 9 30 PM Eastern time. Uh, Thursday, same, same deal as always the show at 9 PM game afterwards. And then Friday, I'm going to do the show, then end it at the end of the stream at the end of the uh, the nightly rundown, and then just go chill. Spend my night watching football, uh, hanging out on the couch, drinking some delicious bourbon, you know, doing doing the Luke Croft thing. So uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are going to look exactly the same. Mondays and Fridays are going to not stream video games after uh, after the nightly rundown. I may talk with some people to see if they're going to be if they'd be willing to step in and do the game streams afterwards. But for now, just plan on Mondays and Fridays at the end of the nightly rundown. We just shut this shit down and uh, and go to bed <laughs> because I just got to get my sleep schedule back into like a, an adult sleep schedule because I often sleep as if I'm still in college. My wife gets on me all the time because of it. She's like, you're not in college anymore. You can't stay up till one and then wake up at six for your, for your class. <laughs> like, but I want to be able to, uh, and I can't just continue to run off of caffeine. 
So anyway, that's the plan. Again, I apologize for the inconsistency. I feel like we had quite a bit of steam picked up over here on our Twitch channel uh, that we've since lost as a result of my inconsistency. Um, there's been some uh, consistency lost over on our YouTube because of it as well. Um, and I also, again, want to apologize for the quality for last week. Last week, I was just kind of walking through it, stepping through the motions, just talking about it. Didn't really bring the fire like I do. Didn't really bring the great discussion that I try to bring. Um, and you guys are good enough to give me the time to come by, watch the stream, come by, watch it on YouTube. And I want to make sure that when you stop by, you're guaranteed to have something that's, uh, that's good. So um, apologies. Um, I'm also going to uh, just kind of take times where I'm like, okay, and, and I'll communicate this well ahead of, ahead of time where I'm going to just say, okay, I'll take a week off. I'm going to take a week off, let Larry and, and Cody handle PVA radio. If anyone wants to step in and do the nightly rundown, they're more than welcome to do that as well. But, you know, the work that goes into this, it's, it's basically like a little part-time job, you know. Spend an hour, four nights a week doing the show. I spend an hour every day putting the, the notes together. And then, you know, an hour editing and making. So, you know, by the end of it, I'm 12, 15 hours into this a week. And just like a regular job, you, you got to step away, take a little time for yourself. But I need to do that in healthier ways so that I can continue to deliver the product when you guys think think you're going to get it when you expect it. And uh, the, the quality of it doesn't suffer. So that's my promise to you guys. Um, apologies again here at the top. Uh, I have missed you. I'm ready to jump back into this, ready to talk about some gaming news. But before we do that, a little bit more housekeeping here at the top. It is September. What is September? September is brought to you guys by Subway. It is a month-long celebration of partners and uh, affiliates over here on Twitch. If you are a viewer of this channel, and I, if you're viewing this on Twitch or if you're viewing on YouTube, you can hop over the link to our Twitch channels in the description. You can subscribe to our channel for half price this month, $2.50 rather than $5 if you're a first time subscriber. Um, how do you do that? You hit the, oop, shit. I almost had it, guys. Last week I had it down. You hit the subscribe button that's right up top here. Uh, you get it for half off. And the great thing about it is, is that while you guys get it for half off, it does not impact how much money we make off a of subscription. Because Twitch normally takes 250 of it. Um, they're not taking their cut of it. Instead, they're just letting all of it pass through to, to the creators. So if you have not subscribed to us yet and you want that cool, uh, you know, um, sub badge next to your name, you want the Kathy 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 emote in the chat, um, you guys can subscribe over here and we would thank you so much for it. Um, that's all the housekeeping I got there, guys. I'm ready to jump into the news. I'm ready to get to it. I need to upload. I need to open up my Epic pen in case you know something. Uh, the need arises. There we go. There it is. You know, you never know when you're going to have to draw on your screen to communicate a point. But let's jump into this like we and start this show like we start every single show with the games that are releasing today. This is from Zach Zweizen over at Kotaku, as we do every single week. Um, he does a great job breaking down all the games that are coming out. And today is Monday, September 16th, and releasing today after I take this sip of delicious Glacier Cherry Gatorade. Is this, gla yeah, Glacier Cherry or White? Some people just call this White, White Gatorade. I feel like if you call, if you like legit call Gatorade by their flavors and not by their colors, probably a serial killer. I don't want to pass too much judgment onto you, but if you're like, hey, can you go get me? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what any of them, uh, I think there's like a cool blue, like, hey, can you pick up the cool blue Gatorade? And you're not just asking for the awesome blue Gatorade but you're really specifically calling it by its name, you probably have a well in your backyard that's sealed over with at least a half dozen bodies in it. At least a half dozen bodies, only four of which can be identified. Because Gatorade flavors go white, blue, light blue, yellow, Orange, all right? Orange is the only one 
that you're allowed to know the name of because it is just called orange. And I guess I'll give you lemon lime. Lemon lime's okay too. Not, not based on flavor. Lemon lime is good. But to call it lemon lime, that's fine. But if you start going out and you're like fucking Arctic Blast or whatever, like you are a serial killer. That is all. Releasing today. The end of an age fading remnants on PC. A cache path of the five on Switch. Winter cometh on PC. Graviton on PC and Mac. Don't give up a cynical tale. Sounds like my, my kind of game right there, baby. On PC and Mac. Hope for City on PC. In case, you know, you are dealing with too much cynicism from playing Don't Give Up. Uh, then Solitaire, Legend of the Pirates on PC and Mac. Which is not a subtitle. So it would be Solitaire, Legend of the Pirates. Not Solitaire, Legend of the Pirates. I wonder if that's a, like a Solitaire spinoff or if it's meaning like alone. Uh, we'll look that one up. Frenzy Plants on PC. All right, so let's uh, let's head over to the trusty YouTubes. YouTube.com. And look up Solitaire. Oh, shit. Missed it. Where is it? Solitaire, Legend of the Pirates. Okay. Never. All right. I mean, we're going to watch it because that's what we do over here. What is this? Am I blowing you guys out of the water? Nah, we're good. What kind of solitaire is that? Do, 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 do. Is this like an old game that's getting a re release or something like that? What the fuck? <laughs> All right, you guys get the gist. No, no point in lingering there. Um, so yeah, that's releasing today. <laughs> What's up, Roy Speedrun? He says, this is my all time favorite game. Oh man. Dude, it looks like shit. When did this game come out? This was posted in Janu on January 3rd, 2017. So did it get an HD remake or something? Cause it's releasing again today on PC. And Mac, Solitaire, Legend of the Pirates. Check it out. All right, let's move on to the news. I mentioned this last week. I want to mention this again here at the top. Had a conversation with both Cody and Larry in our hosts Discord. Um, and we talked about there was some controversy in the uh, true crime podcast community about plagiarism. And from what I understand, in that community especially, plagiarism is quite rampant um, with people stealing material from other podcasters, other writings, other uh, articles, and not giving credit to the sources from which they pull those things. Um, and we try to be very good about letting you know where the stories we read are coming from. If you're hanging out with us over in uh, on Twitch, you can type exclamation point show notes in the chat uh, like so. And it'll pop up with a with a um, view only link where you can go to the show notes for the day and pull up all of the articles that we'll be referencing throughout the day, including the uh, the weekend games. Um, so if you wanted to read the stories for yourself, because we don't read them in their entirety most of the time, uh, you can do so. Uh, give the authors your click. Uh, we also are going to start linking to that document inside of the description on YouTube. And for the podcast, we're going to do that over on podcast services as well, because we, and we, we try to do a really good job already of saying like, Hey, this story comes from uh, Eddie McCoo over at GameSpot. Um, you know, we try to be really, really good about that um, at the top so that you guys know like, Hey, the words we're about to read were not written by us, but we, we, we want to go a step further, make sure that we're properly linking out to these individuals so that you can show them the love um, you know, we use them because we respect these outlets and they do a lot of hard work and we frankly, you know, don't have the time to write articles about these things and be able to display them, uh, beautifully. And so we want to allow you guys to give them clicks, read their words, um, and not just take them and make it seem like as if there are words. So, um, and that's going to be for PVA radio as well. If we use a story, it's going to be linked in those show notes, which will be linked out from everywhere that you find, uh, find the articles. So. 
I'm sorry, that you find the show. So let's jump into it, guys. First item on the list, let's talk about GameStop. GameStop, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a, uh, a history with GameStop. Not only am I a longtime patron of uh, the company, I am also uh, a former employee. I worked there for um, about nine months as an assistant store leader for most of that time. Um, and as we know, GameStop has been going through a lot of changes. Um, there has been layoffs. There has been uh, words of, you know, them picking up all kinds of different initiatives. There's some esports initiatives that they're going after, some retro initiatives that they're going after. Um, last week, it came out that they were going to be shutting down 180 to 200 stores across the nation. Well, today, over on Facebook, a store leaked a redesign. And I'm putting leaked in, in uh, scare quotes here because I think this video is still up. Well, I'm going to double check. It was, it was up right before the show. Get this pulled up. Yes, so the video is still up. And if I know anything from my time at GameStop, it was that corporate was very, very adamant that you do not have an individualized store location Facebook page that looks like it is in any way, shape, or form officially run by GameStop. That was like a super strict rule. We were not allowed to set up a Facebook page for, you know, my GameStop specifically where we could talk about deals and events and things that we had going on at our specific store. And so this this video has been making the rounds. Uh, at the time of it, with me having it pulled up here, uh it has 63,000 views. This v this video has actually been up for a week. Um and so I don't think this is a leak like a lot of people are reporting on it. Uh I think this is just one of those like viral things like hey we're gonna we're gonna leak this video and we're gonna let the media believe it's a leak when in reality it's probably corporate corporate sanctioned or at least like corporate okayed um within this so uh let's watch this video together hopefully you guys can see this uh this is just pulled straight from the gamestop prior plaza uh facebook page hey everybody and here's a employee a talking to time, us but so the weight has definitely we'll we'll kind of watch watch this through and then we'll go back and kind of scrub are. through it. So we one of the things you'll notice tomorrow. like immediately Come see us. is that this Come is super super clean. Come check out some new <laughs> this is about the same size Come as the store that I worked in. Um, I'm going to turn this down for myself. We got you covered. Um, this is about the same size as the store that I worked in, maybe a little classics, longer, but about the same width. And when you walk into the store that I worked in today, you'll notice that it is just like fucking packed to the to the brim with shit. And we're talking, you know, Funko Pops. We're talking T-shirts. We're talking uh, collectibles. We're talking all kinds of just shit packed in there. The thing I love about this design right here is it's super super clean. Tomorrow and. Realizing that, day. like, hey, you don't need a Thanks third of that wall patience. to be front-facing cases because it's it's Thanks okay to just sort by the spines. Like, people, you know, I worked there long enough to know how people browse, and most of the people don't stand it. back and just look at it. They, you know, are, are pulling the aisle. games out. And, they're, and so and take up less space with that. Make it feel like there's more room to move around, a cleaner Should design. Like, you're GameStop, you're a tech company. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is all about like clean lines and peek. you know simplicity, and Come so uh, I out, think this design fun. is really, really, really cool. Um, and I'm hoping that this is kind of going to be the official redesign that we start getting that Think Geek crap out of there. Um, hold on, can I turn autoplay off? Because I don't want it to do that again. Hey, everybody! Oh, I know wow. it's been a long. Time. All right, well let's let's mute this and let's kind of let's kind of walk through and look at some of the things. So the first thing you notice here is this couch. All right. Oh, and I got my Epic pen pulled up. You'll notice this couch right. Oh, you'll notice this couch right here. <laughs> Subreddit pointless red circle here. I give this couch about three to five hours before getting just disgustingly cheesy and sticky. All right. I worked at GameStop long enough to know that. Every item in that store that is there for any longer than this three to five hour mark is going to get disgustingly sticky. I'm talking demo stations. 
I'm talking, I'm wiping down the counter, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the checkout counter every few, every few hours because it just gets gross. The debit card readers are getting gross. This couch right here going to get fucking disgusting after some time. But I don't just want to be a negative Nancy. To, to, at the top here, I think this redesign is really cool. I, I really do. I, I think it's clean. I think they're focusing on the right thing. So the first thing you get is this just giant ass entertainment center station where you can just sit down, chill. Hopefully that there's hopefully there's some controllers and shit that's hooked up here that you can just like, hey, camp out here for a second, spend time with with your friends play play you know a demo of some game uh have a good time like gamestop is right now the way the store is designed it's like hey come in we're trying to funnel you along this path because it's really aisle based now like <laughs> because there's just so much shit like we're trying to funnel you around the store in a certain certain way um and find your stuff and get out there's nothing like inviting you to stick around um, and gaming is all about the culture. It's all about um, getting together with other people who enjoy games and talking about games. And when you're creating a space that's more conducive for that, I think you're leaning into what makes gaming so great. And, and GameStop is recognizing that. Roy Speedrun says, death a lot nicer. I totally agree, man. I, I, I like this cleaner aesthetic. I like the fact that, yeah, there's Funko Pops, but you'll notice that they're here in these little, like, I don't know if these are probably what two feet wide, two and a half feet wide. They're only about five Funko Funko pop boxes wide. So the, it's not like just a wall where they're stacked seven deep behind it anyway, where you can't find anything. This seems like a store that I can browse and actually maybe find something that I want to purchase rather than just being overwhelmed by pure and total shit. Um, so let's keep going through here and see what we see. I like the center. Um, first of all, I like I like this uh, I like this T-shirt set up here. Easily stows away if you're doing an event at your store for a midnight release, or if you're having some kind of tournament. You need more floor space. You're trying to clear out so people can watch like a main event that's happening on this television. Maybe they'll be able to broadcast big events. Maybe some esports stuff that would be really cool. You can just push that, stow it away. Doesn't take up a ton of room. That's really nice. Um, again, back to the, the games over here. Oh, and I'm pointing when I can, when I could be drawing, um, you know, you've got the, uh, you've got the games here and it's about three deep where it's, where they're all spined, which is just where you can see them through the spines. Um, and then, uh, you've got the front facing covers in the top four shelves. I imagine that this top shelf right here is probably like a promo. Um, I'm interested in what these drawers are. If this is possibly like where the games are being stored and they're behind a lock and key and the employee has to come out here and unlock it if you're looking for something on the PlayStation, anything like that. Um, because it's hard to tell in this video because the quality is so low. But it looks like there's a lock on these. And I don't imagine they would just have drawers where you could freely browse them. Because um, number one, that wouldn't be a great browsing experience. And employees would have to constantly be coming back through and closing those those drawers um so it'd be cool maybe this is where the stuff is being stored um and then you've got you know your your controllers these are live units that are being hung up here uh, i worked in a store where we used demo boxes um live unit just means it has the product in it so um another television display uh, advertising display uh i like this case here where it's not just showing the pre-owned units at the top, which is what these cases are normally used for. Normally these are just, it's all pre-owned shit, but you see you've got brand new VR boxes, you've got the new Fortnite uh, PlayStation, you've got your PS4 Pro boxes. Uh, that's really, really cool. Um, even if these are just display boxes and everything's actually being stored in the back, but um, showcasing your new product as well as your used product, I, I think is really cool, knowing that there's a lot of people who aren't going to be shopping for, for used hardware. Um, and there, there's more PlayStation games there. Uh, that's probably, that was probably your new section. Whereas the first section we looked at was, was pre-owned. Um, so let's see also in the chat, feel free to point out anything that you think is, is cool or interesting. Um, you've got a collectible display here, infinity gauntlet, some other statues and collectibles. 
again, like this is a part of what you want GameStop to be, but you don't want it to be everything. Notice they're not using like overhead space up here, like they do in a lot of stores, um, because your eye doesn't go there. When I worked there, the stuff that we stored up in the overhead section sold very, very minimally. And so, you know, m remove the clutter, make it feel more open, take that shit out of there and realize that when you walk in, this is your eye level right here. Like this is, this is what you're going to be looking at. And that's perfect. Like, don't make me have to bend down to look for a bunch of shit at the ground level. Um, we'll, we'll try to notice again when they go back to the pops, if they were stacked down that low, but like, don't make me, don't make me have to crouch down to find shit. Like this is all very easy browsing over here. Easy eye level. Roy Speedrun says they're just doing so much more with the space, but isn't this redesign going to cost them a bunch of money uh, when they're already hurting? Uh, do you mean, do you mean like from the perspective of just not having the diversity of inventory or just in the sense of having to go in and do this redesign for all of the stores? Um, because I think that um, there's an argument to be made about both those where you could argue like, oh, well, if, you, if you're not carrying as much inventory, there's not as much selection. But I would also say they probably have really good metrics on how that selection is sold. And in all likelihood, the answer is not very well. <laughs> so getting that stuff out of those stores, I'd be interested to know if this was a half and half store. Half and half stores are half, half game sales, half like Think Geek collectible shit. Um, I'd, I'd love to know if this was a converted store um, from a half and half or if this was just a regular, uh, just a regular GameStop. Um, but from financing the redesign aspect, I think that GameStop is in a position right now where they understand like we are going to continue to lose money. We have to continue to lose money on some things in order to get things right. Like businesses go through these phases all the time where they're like, OK, we are going to have to operate at a, at a loss in order to uh, in order to um, in order to get our business back to where it needs to be operationally. Roy Speedrun says, oh, I didn't realize they were getting rid of a bunch of stuff. My local GameStop already doesn't have a ton of collectibles. And that very may, may very well be this store. Um, but a lot of stores, like I think half of the stores in the district I worked in moved to a half and half model. And I was in a space, of, a space about this big. Um, all, it probably doesn't go quite as far back, but um, ours was converted to a half and half. And it was just like, I wish I could find pictures of the one that... Uh, I used to work in because it's just wall to wall shit. You can't find anything. Um, so yeah, uh, okay. The Funko Pops do go all the way down to the ground, but yeah, you get the same thing over here. Uh, you'll notice. We'll and we'll come back here. I love this. Um, let me let me go back a little bit. I love this uh, this kiosk over here. Oh shit. I love this open floor plan kiosk where it's like a pass through. And I imagine in a lot of places, this is probably going to become an annoyance when people walk back through this. Um, but I just think like when I was working at GameStop, they tried to do this with the wrap by opening it up. But there was still this like clear distinction of, hey, this is behind the counter and this is in front of the counter. Um, GameStop's whole business model has always been encouraging uh, its associates to be conversational. And your your mileage may vary in terms of the customer service experience that you've gotten. Um, but they really encourage their associates to go out onto the floor, ask people if they can help them in any way, help them to find products, make good recommendations. Um, and the current setup that they have with the cash wrap and the way that it's set up and like guarding every, everything you have behind it um, is not conducive to that. But having this cash wrap at the back that's more open encourages employees to not just camp out there. Like walk the floor, having the, uh, if these are the game cases, which I don't see any shelves or anything underneath these kiosks over here. If these are the shelves that you have to go to in order to unlock the product, like it keeps you out on the floor longer. You're not, you're not constantly trapped behind this. Now, I do wonder how this is going to work in a busier season. Uh, say like Black Friday, when you've got a line of people out here and, uh, you're going to people are wanting to buy used games. You have to come out here and pull it from these shelves. Um, 
And then when you're out here, you're getting asked a billion questions by people on the floor. But just for everyday operations, I imagine you'll have runners on Black Friday um, in this kind of a setup. But just on a normal day of operation, I think this setup is so much more conducive to the way that GameStop wants their associates to sell things. Um, I also really like the... Uh, <laughs> Hold on, I think we can see a clearer picture of it here in just a, a minute. All right, so you've got this retro gaming station. You see a GameCube over there. Uh, is that a PS1 um, with the old school TVs? You can, this is cool because like, oh, let me clear my screen here. This right here is cool because it looks like, you know, maybe you can bring your Switch in and, uh, you know, like just sit around the table and, and play games there or maybe a gaming laptop in, something like that. That'd be really cool. Um, just really like a, a hangout space um, with these really comfortable chairs. It'd be cool if they sold these chairs uh, in the stores as well. Um, but I like this area. Again, like it's leaning into that culture of um, <laughs> Roy Speedrun says they got to sell beer too. Dude, that'd be dope. Like, let's just go have a Smash Melee tournament and get hammered at GameStop. <laughs> um no, I think this is a, a really cool setup, leaning into that gaming culture, allowing people to come in and actually play games, like make GameStop a place that people want to be. I used to love going to GameStop. I used to want to go to GameStop all the time, but now I have to like drag myself in there because the experience is so bad and the store's so cluttered. Um, yeah, you got an old school Xbox N64. That was an N64 old school Xbox. So, um, some awesome like LAN opportunities playing old school Halo games. Uh, dude, give me some of that fucking fusion frenzy. What's up? Uh, I love this like clean wall design here as well. Like they're not using this space for merchandise. They're using it to say like, this is a place we want gamers to hang out. So let's see. Anything else of note back here? Public restroom. <laughs> so, right. Oh, let's go back. <laughs> this is a little thing, but we sold snacks and stuff at our GameStop as well. Um, but it was like never, it was always like under the cash wrap. It was really hard to see. Nobody really even noticed that we sold it. It'd be cool if they also sold, had like a drink cooler right here too. Um, but, you know, selling the little, uh, what do they call this? It's not compulsion shelf. But where, you know, where people can like just buy uh, impulse, it's an impulse shelf. You know, you're standing at the checkout. Oh, shit. You guys sell hot tamales. Let me let me get some of those. Um, I love this like arena style setup of the monitors here above the cash wrap. You know, um, getting people's attention focused on uh, over here in the center uh, of the store. Um, I just think that's that's a really clean, nice looking Nice looking setup there. Let's continue on. What else do we see? Um, I think that that's really it. Um, you also see your, I think there's some like, I think these are Xbox games right here. You've got your PC accessories. Uh, uh, more collectibles there. Yeah, it's just a, it's a much cleaner setup. Like this is a place I would not mind going into. And these are definitely stock drawers here. There's nothing. Oh, and then this. So how does he describe it? Let's you can check out everything for GameStop.com. So yeah, right here you can order something directly from this. Um, you can browse the their store. I imagine you can probably buy digital codes. It, well, yeah, you can see them right here. You can buy digital codes directly from the screen here. You could get your trade-in shit, come over here, purchase uh, purchase digital currency probably, get it emailed directly to, to your account. Um, ship it to your house, retro included. Ship the retro stuff to your house as well. This is just a sneak peek. Come visit us tomorrow. Also, look at this. Look at those computers, man. Those don't look old as shit. Just a sneak peek. Come visit us tomorrow, hang out, have some fun. Look, I don't root for GameStop's demise. We've been over this a thousand times. I, I think that GameStop still has a place in the gaming culture. It just needs to figure out how to exist. And it, it exists by creating spaces 
Oh, and this isn't a mall. Is this a mall? Lo no, this isn't a mall location. This is a plaza location. So this is an outside facing door. So, um, yeah, reclaiming this space to be a hangout space, a place where people want to go to like play games, talk about games, discuss games, um, hire people who know how to talk about games. Like, uh, I think I'm with you, Roy Speedrun. This seems like a smart idea. Clean up your store, make it more focused, emphasize the culture, emphasize ordering online, um, recognize that you're probably not selling a bunch of games within your store. You're probably uh, with, you know, people take with digital taking up more and more of the space. Highlight your your new hardware as much as you're highlighting your pre-owned hardware um, and just don't make it a cluttered fucking mess, man. So, yeah, I'm here for it, GameStop. I want to see this. If I see this in our store, I'm going to be pumped. I'll be, I'll be there a lot more if this is the way that it's set up. But for the love of God, employees, for all that is holy, please wipe down this goddamn couch, right? At least twice a day. At least twice a day. All right? Moving on. Next item on the list, Gears 5 had the biggest Xbox first party launch since Halo 4. This is from Jordan Serrani over at uh, IGN. It says, with over 3 million players since it was released, Gears 5 had the biggest first party launch for Xbox since Halo 4 in terms of player count. Gears 5 easily doubled the first week's debut of Gears of War 4, uh, according to Xbox Wire, making it the, quote, biggest launch week of any Xbox game studio title this generation, end quote. The 3 million player count was tracked from the early access launch on September 6th through this past weekend. Uh, the shooter also set first party records on PC, becoming the biggest Xbox Game Pass launch on the platform and Microsoft's best ever first party launch on Steam, which... How many games have how many games launched on Steam for for Microsoft? I thought Gears was among some of the first. Anyway, uh, it also tripled the performance of Gears of War Four on PC. Those specific numbers weren't revealed. Gears Five was released as part of the Game Pass on both Xbox One and PC, which certainly factored into its record-setting launch. The increased player count over its predecessor supports. Uh, Microsoft's past comment about Game Pass greatly increasing their player base. Um, so yeah, this is this is interesting, and it and it really is interesting in terms of how we talk about the success of games at launch now when we start to factor in the streaming services, um, because we are in this space where there's a lot of unique ways where you can start to fudge the numbers. For engagement, I'm not saying that's exactly what's happening here with Gears 5. I do think that there are a shitload of people that are playing this game. But does biggest launch ever in terms of player base result in biggest launch ever in terms of dollars and cents driven for your business? And how does, how does Microsoft go about um, determining the financial success of a game's launch when it's being tied so directly to... Um, to a streaming service like Xbox, uh, to a subscription service like Xbox Game Pass. Um, are you counting financially for yourself the number of new subscriptions in the month where Gears 5 was launched? Are you counting the number of su uh, subscriptions retained in which the person downloaded uh, Gears 5? Are you talking about the number of subscriptions that were retained in which the person downloaded and actually launched and played Gears 5? Like, how are you talking financially about the success of the launch of Gears 5? And I think that that probably matters less on a first party basis where there's you know, a lot better financial deals that are probably worked out um, rather than, you know, the engagement based payouts that I imagine a lot of third party people have gotten as a result of going on to uh, onto Game Pass. But this is obviously a huge success for for Gears. It's obviously a huge success for Microsoft. And I don't want to take away any of that from them. Gears 5, from what I've heard, I have not had the chance to play it yet, is an incredible game um, and it deserves as many people playing it as possible. Uh, and three million players since it's released. Uh, is definitely nothing to uh, uh, to scoff at because that's a that's a massive launch for them. Um, in a franchise that I think a lot of people would say, yes, this is a pillar of Xbox, but it is not. It does not carry the same weight as it did on the in the 360 days. So 
um, having a launch that matches Halo 4 is a huge deal for them. But it just it, it, it creates an interesting conversation when we're when we're talking about engagement, when we're talking about the success of these launches financially. And I imagine the financial impact of Gears 5 has been massive. Uh, the number of people who are signing up for uh, Xbox Game Pass, the number of people who are so you know Xbox Game Pass Ultimate has this this cool way, and I can't, I don't know exactly how to do it where. Um, you can effectively get like, I think three years of the service for super, super cheap. Um, and it's good because it, you get this immediate, immediate satisfaction of being like, oh shit, I can play Gears 5. There's this brand new game that dropped for, for my Xbox and I can, I can play it, you know, free of charge because I've already paid for this service. Like you get that immediate satisfaction, but then you have this subscription service that you're already subscribed to that ties you over into the next generation of console so that you're like well when you're assessing which console to purchase you're like oh well i mean i've already got xbox game pass ultimate so i've got you know live i've got the game pass subscription i've got all these awesome games so why don't i just go ahead and purchase purchase the xbox the new xbox at launch too because i'm going to have all those games available to play for me on there so Brilliant move by Xbox. I think this is just an awesome, awesome move for both the players and for them as a company. And uh, I'm excited to play Gears. I want to I wanna get that downloaded sometime this week and maybe play it on stream. So, 3 million players. Awesome numbers. Next item on the list. There is a Funko Pop movie on the way. Uh, this is from Gizmodo. From James Whitbrook over at Gizmodo. It says, whether you love them or loathe them, Funko Pop vinyl figurines are everywhere. Their big heads and vacant stairs providing a blank canvas for practically every pop culture series under the sun to be turned into an action figure. Now they're moving off store shelves and onto the silver screen. Deadline reports that Funko has partnered with Warner Brothers uh, animation group off the back of its long-running relationship with Warner, turning its myriad of uh, franchises into toys and merchandise, pop vinyl or otherwise, to create a new animated movie based on Funko Pops. For now, Warner has only optioned the rights for the movie, but come on, it's happening. I know it, you know it, the world dreads and runs from it. It arrives nonetheless. Um, Allison Abate, executive VP of Warner Animation Group, uh, will oversee the collaboration between Warner and Funko while Teddy Newton will write the script and Mark Dindle, uh, known for animated films like The Emperor's New Groove, Chicken Little, and, career, and a career at Disney Animation that saw him work on the likes of Aladdin and The Little Mermaid is on board as well, presumably to direct. Um, I'm interested in what this looks like. Um, he references the Lego movie later on. Um, and talks about um, it talks about how it may be modeled a a after the Lego movie, but the difference is is that with Funko Pops, all of these characters belong to a licensed franchise, a licensed franchise in which I'm sure Warner Brothers owns the rights to a lot of the the characters that are um, that have Funko Pops made after them but there's a lot of others that they don't. And so I'm interested to see like, is this going to take characters from across a bunch of different franchises, put them as Funko Pops, or are they going to create like the Lego movie did where it's more generic characters in that same, in, in a similar art style. Now this isn't like insanely gaming related, it's gaming adjacent because there's a lot of gaming franchises that are tied up and have Funko Pop figurines as well. Um, you can see in the picture here, you know, there's Fallout, there's Call of Duty. Um, let's see, I've got Overwatch pops behind me. There's Bioshock uh, over there. So um, there's gaming franchises within this. I don't know. I enjoyed the Lego movie. And uh, so I, I may enjoy a Funko Pop movie as well. But it's just going to depend on how they decide to use the characters and use the franchise. I think it's interesting and, and and this is a little different because Funko Pops use um, use actual established franchises, but we live in this world now. My my uh, my niece turned six this weekend, 
And I, I want to make sure I get the name right of what she wanted her party. Yes, okay. And I'm sure you guys have heard of this. Pusheen. Pusheen. My niece wanted a Pusheen party. My six-year-old niece. And so we went... She got a ton of gifts that were Pusheen related. She had decorations that were Pusheen related. She had a cake that was Pusheen themed. She had drawings that were Pusheen related, a coloring book that was Pusheen related. Her backpack was Pusheen. And I asked my sister, I said, what the fuck is Pusheen? <laughs> like, I see this stuff everywhere, but I have no idea what it is. And there's like all these characters and shit. I said, is this a, is this a cartoon? Is it a show? Is it a movie? Is it a, a, is it a book series? Like, what is it? And she said, it's nothing. <laughs> it's just a character. It's just a set of characters that people that it's cute and they've merchandised around it. And they've done it to the point where there's this like rabid fan base for them. My, my brother-in-law told me that uh, they found a pushing party in Durham, which is about mm, a little under two hours away. Uh, and so they took my niece to this Pusheen party and he was like, we went and there was like six people there and three of them were adults who were really into this Pusheen stuff. Um, and I think it's interesting that we're in this world that like, if you can just market your merchandise well enough, you can create a franchise. Cause I'm sure we're going to see a Pusheen movie, Pusheen TV show, Pusheen book series. But it's like, I told my sister, I was like, they drew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve lines. Twelve lines on this Pusheen cat. Hold on. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen lines for a Pusheen cat. They drew sixteen lines and have created a massive fucking merchandise enterprise around it and while funko pops has leveraged established franchises to build their product the look and the aesthetic of a funko pop is so instantly recognizable that they have essentially built and marketed their own merchandise line that they are now going to start to launch into all of these other multimedia things we had gears pop earlier uh that came out earlier this month uh, so, you know, there's video games with that licensing. There's going to be this movie with that licensing. I imagine we're going to get a lot more um, media out of that licensing because we live in a world today where you can just mar market the merchandise and let it build itself into a media empire. It's fucking crazy, man. Crazy. My six-year-old niece loves 16 lines. Pusheen. Uh, last item on the list here. Mixer added ads to their platform. This is from The Verge from Bajan Steven. It says, Mixer, Microsoft's answer to Twitch, has just rolled out its first ads, but it appears the only entity earning money from the ads will be Mixer itself. Some of the ads will show up on channels run by Microsoft itself, but other partner channels like Ninjas will now see ads appear in front of their content that don't support them financially. Mixer announced the move last Friday on its Level Up cast, a weekly show about what's happening on the platform. Ads were always part of the plan, said Mixer community manager Andy Salisbury and guest host uh, Ethan Rothel, Rothamel. Um, people who have Mixer's premium monthly subscription offering Pro won't see the ads, they said, and neither will people who have subscribed to a partner channel. Uh, for now, only Mixer is making ad revenue, at least according to Roth, uh, uh, Rothamel. Uh, although he did take pains to say that ads are ultimately meant to support creators too. It seems that the company is still figuring out how to integrate earned ad revenue with its partnered accounts. Quote, I get it. Ads are not the most fun thing in the world to deal with, but it's super important to remember what we're doing on the site. The site is free. You're watching content for free and you're supporting partners. End quote. Um, when reached for comment, a Microsoft spokesperson provided a statement, quote, we are always testing and exploring new features and monetization options for Mixer creators, but have nothing more to share at this time, end quote. Microsoft wouldn't confirm whether its creators will receive any revenue from the ads it runs on their channels. Now, I do want to point out, and I, let me see, I don't think it's mentioned. Yeah, 
It's not mentioned here. I want to point out a couple things about ads. Um, just in general, and then more specifically to Mixer. I'm not saying that I'm like intimately familiar with the details here on Mixer's, uh, Mixer's monetization model. Um, in general though, impressions, payment for impressions on ads is hella low, hella low. And the amount that you're making off of those ads is based on obviously number one, the volume at which you uh, <laughs> your audience has served those ads, but it's also based on the quality and the curation of those ads. So ads on, let's say, YouTube are worth a lot less than an ad where, let's say, The Verge goes out and brokers a deal with, who are they running ads for on this site right now? Uh, oh, my, <laughs> oops, I have my ad blocker on. Um, Let's see, who, who's running them on IGN right now? Does IGN have any ads going? Uh, okay, if, if Gizmodo was to go out and, and say, we're gonna broker a deal with Best Buy, and Best Buy is gonna pay us X amount of money to display our ad because we can guarantee them this much traffic, these many eyes on their ad, that's going to generate a lot more revenue for that establishment and that outlet than just say I go out and I put together a 30 second ad video and I'm like uh I'll bid x amount per thousand impressions or whatever like and the reason for that is it's much less curated there's a lot less guaranteed traffic on that so I imagine I don't know what Microsoft is using to fuel their ads they probably have their own ad, plat ad platform that people can pay for it's probably not super competitive, which means it's probably not super expensive to get your ads on there right at the moment, which means there's probably not a lot of ad revenue being generated to begin with. Um, and that doesn't excuse the fact that Microsoft isn't giving any of this money over to the creators. But what I do want to point out is that Microsoft does have something, and I want to make sure that this is still this still exists. Um, uh, They used to have something called simulated ad revenue, um, where essentially, hold on. I, I don't know if this is what it's called. But they used to have a program that was basically like simulated ad revenue where they would they would say like, look, we're not running ads right now, but we want to pay you. It, it was hypothetical ad revenue. And this was partners pay. So if you were a partner for Mixer and you accrued X amount of views, they would pay you as if you were running ads on that site, uh, on uh, if you were running ads on your stream. So what I imagine they're probably doing is allowing that hypothetical ad revenue to bridge the gap between them figuring out the bells and whistles that they need to, in the kinks that they need to work out in order to pass that ad rev revenue along. And then they'll probably sunset the hypothetical ad revenue because they'll have actual ad revenue. Um, I'd like to see something more. I don't want to say that definitively, but if that, if you are a mixer partner or, you know, a mixer partner, you are, uh, you know, familiar with mixers, uh, platform and know if that, hypothetical ad revenue is still something uh i'd be really really interested because i think that takes the sting off of it a little less like hey we've had in place for quite some time this simulation where we're paying people as if we are running ads on their channel um it's just we don't have the ads yet and if they're going to continue to use that system to bridge that gap so I don't want to throw Mixer totally under the bus right now. And, and to be fully transparent, I think Mixer is a really great platform. We'd be streaming over there if they had a few more features. But um, it also gives, it, it incentivizes people to subscribe again. Like, it's not just, hey, subscribe so you can support the channel. It's subscribe because, hey, are you sick of seeing these ads rolling in the middle of the stream? Like, boom, you can subscribe. And it gives your uh, the people who have your partners who have subscriptions available to them it, it allows them to incentivize people to subscribe even more so uh cool to see mixer growing adding new things to their platform i'm not a huge fan of ads but i work in ad advertising and i understand the, the uh that they're necessary for platforms like this to exist and continue to deliver free content and it helps everybody that's involved and 
big or small ways. Um, it keeps it free for you. It puts a little change in the creator's pocket and it continues to put money back into the platform so that they can continue to improve it. So Mixer adding ads by no means a terrible thing. It's just, I would like to see them figure out sooner rather than later how to get that actual ad revenue back into the hands of the creator before a bigger stink is made out of it. Or at least come out and say, hey, we we recognize this is a problem. This hypothetical ad revenue, the simulated ad revenue is something that, that stands in the gap. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the PVA Nightly Rundown for September 16th, 2019. I appreciate you guys coming over. Uh, remember, Mondays and Fridays, no, no game streaming after the show. We're just gonna end it because I'm gonna go right now, edit the show, put it all together, push it out on YouTube, have it ready to go because I have to be up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. So I'm gonna hop off. And uh, if you're watching over here on twitch.tv slash PVA radio, make sure you hit that follow button. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Get it for half off if you're a first time subscriber to the channel at $2.50. It's greatly appreciated. You get the uh, the sub badge next to your name and you get the Kaffa 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 emote uh, that you can drop in the chat as well. Uh, if you're watching over on YouTube, make sure you hit the like button, leave a uh, comment below and hit the subscribe and the notification bell. We load anywhere between five to seven new videos a day um and it's you can watch this broken out topic by topic or watch the entire show um from from beginning to end if you fancy that but um until tomorrow night at 9 p.m eastern time we love you guys goodbye